بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ہیلو ایوری ون ویلکم بیک ٹو دا پی ایل تھری ہنڈریڈ ایگزام پریپریشن سیریز ویئر وی آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا سیکنڈ لرننگ پیتھ ماڈل دا ڈیٹا ان دس ویڈیو وی آر گوئنگ ٹو کور دا ٹاپک کریٹ سنگل ایگریگیشن میجرس وچ از پارٹ آف دا سیکشن کریٹ ماڈل کیلکولیشنس بائی یوزنگ ڈیکس سو ان دا پریویس ویڈیو وی ہیو آلریڈی اسٹارٹیڈ آر ڈیکس پورشن اینڈ وی ہیو ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ میجرس واٹ آر امپلیسڈ میجرس اینڈ ہاؤ دیز کین بی ریپلیسڈ بائی دا ایکسپلیسڈ میجرس so now we are going to talk about a specific category of measures which are called as single aggregation measures these measures operate on columns they are just doing the aggregations on single column so let's go to the power bi environment and see how we can start creating the aggregation measures so in the previous video we created our first measure which was total quantity and we created this measure inside the transaction data table and we created a formula which was just this simple formula that said sum and inside the sum we actually passed the name of the column so here sum is an example of an aggregation function which is actually working on a single column so any function that is working on a single column is going to be a single aggregation or an aggregate uh, or a or a simple aggregator function so we are just going to look at a few aggregation functions now but before i actually go and show you some of those aggregation functions let me show you how we can create tables where we can store the measures so once you are creating measures soon we are going to see that there are going to be Uh, dozens or even hundreds of measures that can be created so instead of putting those measures inside of these tables our uh, best practice is that you create tables which actually just save the measures so let me just create a table here and i am going to show you how we can do that so i just need to go here on and click on this enter data option and this is going to allow me to create a table so i don't need to really go and do anything here all i need to do is i just need to change the name of the table so i am going to call this as single aggregation measure so i am trying to create a table where i can create all kinds of single aggregation measures so i am just going to put the name here and then i am going to click here on load so after a few seconds you are going to see that in the data area um, there is this single aggregation measures table that has been created which if i expand is nothing but a dummy column here so now i want that the first measure that i created which was total quantity i want to move this measure from this transactions data into the same single aggregation measure table so i can just go and click on this total quantity and here i am going to see in the pane here that there is this option just underneath the name which says home so i can just come here home to home table so i can just come here and instead of the transactions data i can just click on single aggregation measures so after a few seconds you are going to see that this total quantity is going to appear under this single aggregation measures and here it is now being shown so you need to have at least one measure in this area before you can remove this dummy column so i now want to remove this dummy column one here so i'm going to just click on the three dots here and here i'm going to select the option delete from model and it is asking me are you sure you want to delete i say yes so after a few seconds you are going to see that this column one is now deleted and you are going to see a different kind of a structure here now so now what you are seeing here is that here a, the icon for the table has changed to a calculator icon so what this is telling me this is telling me that this single aggregation measures table is just storing the measure so any measure which is now going to be related to the single aggregation i am going to create here so all i need to do is that before i create my measure i just need to click on the table here and then i need to go and click on the new measure so now uh, we are going to create these measures but let's have a look at what are the different type of single aggregation measures 
so now i am going to show you the single aggregation measures or they are also referred to as the aggregator functions in the dax language so here you see there are four functions count count a distinct count and count rows and all of these have in the brackets column name column name column name here this count rows is a it has a different um, uh, thing here which is a table but you can say that this can also is is an alternative to the count function so i am going to cover this towards the end before uh, once we are actually covering the count and count a then here we have sum average max min and divide and all of these have the column name option here divide is a special case because divide cannot obviously work on a single column you have to specify a numerator and denominator so what i am going to do now is that i am going to go and into power bi and i am going to write all the aggregations associated with these functions so i am going to write measures using these aggregator functions and then i am going to explain what each of this is uh, what each of these function is actually doing so here i am back in the power bi environment and i have created a few measures using all of these functions dax functions that we just saw in the video so now let's look at the behavior of these functions and what is the dax that has been written so the first uh, dax uh, formula here is the average quantity so here we are using the average function and the same quantity column inside the transactions data table is being used so now in order to see the results what i am going to do is i am going to clear the visual from the canvas and i am going to pull this average quantity into the values option here and here you are going to see the result which is the value just shown here in this particular visual so this is average this average function is again an example of a single aggregation function that you just need to pass any column it has to be a quantitative column of course because average is a mathematical operation and numbers are required to perform the average then next one let me just delete this from the visual here so the next one is the max quantity so max is what it is going to return the maximum value from the column that has been passed so it is max and then i have to pass the same quantity column so if i bring this max here in the values option here again i am going to see in a few seconds the result and the result is going to be showing the value of the maximum quantity so here i can see that the value for max quantity is 6 so it shows that in the column quantity the maximum value that is there in the column is the is is value 6 similarly there is min quantity same formula that we have created total quantity we had already looked in one uh, in the previous video so i do not need to explain this then there are a few functions that are actually performing the same kind of work so the first one is the total transactions and in the bracket i have mentioned count because here it is using the count function so what the count function does count function is actually returning the count the the number of number of records in that particular column so now let me just pull in this total transactions count value here in the values pane and you are going to get a result which is 269720 and we already have seen this that these are the number of records or these are the number of rows in our data then the next total transactions measure here uses another function which is count a and the difference between count and count a is that count count once you are using count then the column the column which is being used here like the quantity column in case of count it is even going to count the null values but in case of count a it is going to ignore the null values and it is going to only return the count where the where there is some kind of a value in the column so it is going to ignore the null values so now i am going to remove this from the report and i am going to show you what if uh, what is the difference so i don't know if there is any null value here but let's see so if i just pull in this count a so uh, yes we we know that there is no null value so it is going to give you the same result
next we have another function that works on this on the single column and that is the distinct count so here you can see the formula distinct count so we are using the same quantity column and what distinct count does is that it only counts the distinct values so it is going to return you the count of the distinct values so now let's see what is the result from from this particular um, using this particular function so i'm going to bring in this one into the values pane here and here it is showing that there are only six distinct values in this particular column so remember this is the kind of the same feature that we saw once we were inside the power query so these are the functions that operate on a single column before i actually wrap up this particular uh, video i just want to show you another function although this is not a single uh, single column function but it actually does the same thing that we have seen for the count so this function is the count rows function but here the difference is that instead of passing the column it you just have to pass the table so it is going to return you the count of rows in the table so effectively you can use count or count rows but just for the sake of uh, completion i have mentioned it here although this has nothing to do with the columns but here you are not passing a column you are passing a table it won't allow you to pass a column value here before i close this video i just want to share a website with you which is a very very simple website which says dax.kite so it is obviously impossible for any person to remember the name of the functions and understand what each function is doing so this is a very good website there could be any other websites as well it is up to you but this is what i actually use for uh, writing dax and this is the dax.guide i'm going to put this url in the content section as well and here in this website you are going to see all the functions that are there in the dax language and here in this area there is this bifurcation that they have done based on their own understanding and they have divided the different dax functions into different categories like aggregator functions is what one category date and time functions filter functions financial functions and so on and so forth so here if you see that the category which is on the top is the aggregation functions but here you are going to see much more functions which are not which we haven't actually covered here so here you are going to see some functions like average x you are going to see count ax and you are going to see some other functions so we are going to talk about these functions uh aggregation functions which are uh, which are a bit different in another video but but just remember that all the single column aggregation functions are also covered here so average is here we have just had a look at average we just had a look at count we just had a look at uh, count rows also so there are a few of the functions that uh, are here so one one good example is this count blank so let me just click here on this count blank although i haven't covered it but this is this is just another uh, uh, you know uh, thing that you should also know so what is the count blank function so what you see here on this website is that you are going to get an explanation of what the function does then you are going to see the syntax of that particular function what does this function return so what if you are passing it to a well, once you are using it what should you expect so we know that we are using it in a measure we are we should get a scalar value so what this count blank function does is that it counts the number of blanks in a column so if you just want to know how many empty values or blank values are there you can use this function so the point of highlighting here is that it is although impossible to cover each and everything because we do not have the time but make sure that you actually go and you watch all the functions in this list and make sure that you actually go and read the description so if i just uh, want to read about the sum function the thing which i want to highlight here is that here you are going to see the function itself the sum function the syntax the return values and if i scroll down i also here i am going to see how the function is actually used so there are certain examples where you can go and you know use uh, the dax uh, sum function so all of this is covered here 
so make sure you are familiar with the, this website uh, you can use some other website there are so many but i actually recommend this website because it is the most comprehensive and it covers uh, almost all the information so that was all about the dax functions related to the single columns single column aggregators so we are going to cover a lot of dax in 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 the subsequent videos so i'm going to see you in the next video